what's going on guys so we'll be taking a look at the Movo WMI C70 wireless microphone system I believe this comes with a lavalier mic so that is what I'll be reviewing it with but you essentially carry this pack and then you have the lavalier mic of course running up to your shirt collar or whatever and you have the receiver somewhere else plugged into whatever you're uh, recording your voice to so we'll go ahead and get into the box here this is just the packaging that comes in it's fairly simple packaging and I actually really like it the uh, green colors here go very very nicely with the uh, gray pictures of the receiver and whatnot but yeah on the back it has some of the features and just in reading that you can do so now um, it says ideal for DSLR video commander for high quality and clear sound 48 UHF channels there's a mic and line in easy to use with display and a few more things um, it is powered with two AA batteries which sounds a little unfortunate just from right now because this is a little expensive for something to be using with um, two AA batteries in my opinion but I haven't actually used it yet so we'll go ahead and get in the box here and then I'll show you what's inside the box and then I'll go ahead and actually use it for a bit and then um, finish the review. So this is everything that we get in the box here. It looks like we have the uh, transmitter and receiver here. I'm not sure which is which. They look almost identical. So, okay, this is the um, receiver here because it's the output, I believe. And then the transmitter is here because it has the um, line in and the microphone. So it looks to be the only real difference between these two is the uh, input jacks on the top because there's line in and a microphone and power and mute. And the other one has power, output, and a headphone jack. Headphone jack is for um, monitoring your audio. The output is for outputting to whatever you're going to record to. And the power is, of course, your power switch. The um, microphone, I'm guessing, is just like the lavalier microphone that looks to be included. And then the line in, I'm not sure what that's for, but I'll go ahead and figure that out. I'm guessing this thing down here is for the batteries, so if we go ahead and pull that out, we do have a nice little tray for the batteries. It's actually pretty nice how they did that. It's actually kind of be kind of cool to put batteries in here because you get to pinch these little things and then pull the battery tray out, which is, I don't know, pretty cool. You do also have two clamps in the back here. You can put this like over your back pocket or something like that, or mount them or hang them on various things. It's nice that they have the nice little metal clamps. These clamps actually do feel pretty secure, so you'll be able to secure whatever you want to these. It looks like we also have tripod sockets here, so if you're wanting to mount these to a tripod or something, I'm not sure why you would mount it like this it seems a little weird it seems like it should be on the bottom but if you are wanting to mount it um, from the back here you can do that because they have the little tripod socket so we'll put these out of the way for now and we'll go ahead and look at what else we get in the packaging here I believe this is a 3.5 millimeter to XLR adapter so it doesn't look like there's anything in this particular kit that will um, cause you to use this but if you are wanting to use like a higher end microphone or something like that and transmit it wirelessly you can do that because it has a converter to a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so you plug this into the microphone input on the transmitter I believe, and then plug your microphone into the XLR input and then you'd be transmitting the uh, audio wirelessly, which is nice. It looks like this is a hot shoe mount with a tripod socket adapter on here. So if you wish to mount the receiver to your camera um, through the hot shoe mount, you can do that now since you have this nice little mount here. It's also nice to include this because it'll be useful for a bunch of other things too. Um, there are so many uses for these things. I bought a bunch of them on eBay actually because they're very, very useful just mounting lights and various things to it. So it's nice to they included one of these and they didn't make it like permanently connected to the transmitter or anything like that. They just made it so you have the option. It looks like we also have a little wind filter here and then a clamp for the lavalier microphone which is right over here which we'll get into. It also looks like we just have a standard auxiliary cable and this piece here also screws off for some reason so I'm not exactly sure what this is for but um, I'll figure this out once I've actually used the wireless system a little bit. It looks like the last thing in here is our lavalier microphones. We just have the actual lavalier microphone here and it is connected to standard 3.5 millimeter but um, I'm not sure why it is spinning like this so I'm really not sure what these are for. Maybe it um, screws on to lock on to something or something like that. Not entirely sure yet because I haven't even used this kit yet but I'll tell you this in a bit once I've actually used the actual kit. So yeah, nice that we have included a lavalier microphone even though you can use this kit with a bunch of different microphones but they included a lavalier one which is nice. Something that will probably actually be useful for this wireless microphone system because I've found that they're somewhat difficult to set up but we'll see with this one and I'm sure um, inside it will tell us what all of these cables are. So it almost explains what the cables are. We have a windscreen here which I said there's the belt clip. Yeah. Microphone holder, there's a stereo 3.5 millimeter mini plug cable, and then an omnidirectional lavalier microphone, and then an XLR output cable. So basically everything I said. Um, it doesn't tell us why this 3.5 millimeter plug actually rotates like this, but um, like I said, I'll figure it out once I've actually used a kit for a bit. So this has just been a quick unboxing of this wireless microphone system. I'm actually going to go ahead and set everything up and use it for a bit and see how well it works and all of that before actually reviewing it. I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll come back to you guys once I've done that. All right, so I have had a chance to use this for a while and I will go ahead and give you my feedback on it. Just to let you know from the beginning of the video until now, I have been using the Audio-Technica System 10 wireless lavalier kit. That is probably about twice the price of this, but it'll just give you an idea of the sound quality difference and whatnot because I'm actually using a very similar system to this one just from a different manufacturer.
feature and a slightly higher price point. But yeah, anyway, here we have the uh, transmitter and then the receiver. These are the only four things we'll actually need to get everything set up. You can use more if you want. I have gone ahead and put the little windscreen and the clippy thing on the uh, lavalier mic so it's actually ready to be used. You can theoretically take this off if you want and then it just exposes the microphone, but uh, I've found that the windscreens kind of get rid of a little popping and whatnot and everything like that without really changing the sound at all. So I would definitely recommend using the windscreen even if you're not necessarily in a windy environment. This is a different auxiliary cord than the M1 in the kit, just because I had this one sitting around. I didn't want to undo the one in the kit if I didn't have to, so I'm using this auxiliary cord instead of the one that came with the kit. I found that the, the rings here theoretically lock into uh, these. However, I found that it didn't actually lock in at all. Like, I tried to lock it in. I mean, you can plug it in here into the microphone jack, like this, and you can see there's a little, like, screw mount on the uh, actual port here. But if we go ahead and screw this in, twisting it for a second doesn't really do anything. You can still pull it out. Then if we put it the other way, you can twist it the other way just in case. I don't know, it would be a little weird if it was this way. You can still pull it out. So I don't know how the locking mechanism works necessarily. I found that it didn't really do anything, which is a little annoying because, I mean, it's supposed to theoretically lock the uh, plug into the jack here, but I found that I couldn't get it to lock no matter how hard I tried. However, the uh, little ring on here doesn't make this a proprietary auxiliary cord. You can still, of course, use like any auxiliary cord with this, which means you can use any microphone or anything like that. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and show you how to get the kit all set up, and then I'll go ahead and actually switch to this audio source rather than the Audio Technica System 10 and then I will kind of give you an idea of the difference in audio quality and whatnot. You can of course just hear the sounds because you know it's always a good thing to actually hear our microphone sounds as part of a review. But here we have the uh, transmitter and then we have the receiver here. If we go ahead and power them both on at the same time just like this. You don't have to power it on at the same time, and I'm just going to for the uh, ease of use here. I have changed them to channel 6. You can change channels just by pushing these buttons here. It is very, very easy to change a channel. You just simply push a button up here, 7, 8, um, and theoretically one of these should turn off. Yeah, okay. So this one starts blinking if it's not connected to this one, which is nice because it gives you a good indicator, but if we go to channel 8 on here, um, then they should theoretically both be the same color here, which means that they're connected to each other. It's super easy to change channels. You just push the little button, which is very, very nice. Um, nothing too complicated here, and they start on channel 1, but I'm the one that put them up to channel 6. So if you have uh, feedback or something or frequency problems on one channel, you can simply change the channel and then you should theoretically be able to eliminate the problem. If we are wanting to change the volume, it's a little hidden, which is kind of annoying. I mean, it's not hidden if you read the instruction manual, but I wish there was like a little dial on the side or something to change the volume. Since this is a receiver here, this is changing the volume, I believe, just to the monitoring headphones. So if you have headphones plugged in here to monitor the audio, I believe this changes the volume to the headphones. And to do that, we press set and it says volume. And then we can change the volume here by simply pressing these buttons here. Nothing too complicated there. And then the same here. I want to say this is how loud it's actually picking up the sound from the microphone here. And it's the same deal here since they do change volume independently. So I'm assuming they're changing the volumes of different things. I'm still not really sure what this um, line in jack here does, which is unfortunate because I said I would try to figure it out. But I read the instruction manual fully and I didn't find anything like that. I mean, generally when something says line in, I would assume it's like you could plug something into here and it will overlay that on top of whatever you're recording or instead of what you're recording. So if you were to plug in your phone or something like that via an auxiliary connection into here, I would think it would transmit that audio to the receiver here and then it would be recorded, but that is not the case. I tried that and I tried multiple different auxiliary inputs and nothing was actually recorded, so I'm really not sure what the line in thing is here. It doesn't talk about it at all in the instruction manual, which is unfortunate. And then we have the power slash mute button, so if you press this button here, it says uh, mute and it gives you a nice indicator. So this, since this is connected to the microphone, you can easily push this button and it will mute the microphone so nothing will be sent to the receiver here. On the receiver, we just have our output, which is of course what would be connected to your camera or computer or whatever you're saving the recording files to. Then we have a headphone jack for monitoring the audio. The only other button we have on top here is a power button, but if you push it once it doesn't actually do anything except light up the screen. While on the transmitter it actually mutes the microphone. Like I said earlier, both of the things are basically identical except for the uh, ports on the top. The only real problem I've had with this so far is when you're monitoring audio and you switch a channel or something like that on either the receiver or the transmitter there's a very loud crackling sound that is way louder than anything you're listening to and it really hurts your ears if you're listening to headphones. I don't think you can change the volume of it or anything like that. So I did find if I were to turn off either one of these or change the channel just anytime they lose connection from one another there was a very very loud like popping sound or a go or something like that through the headphone jack on the receiver which was very very annoying so whenever I had to change channels or anything like that I had to actually take the monitoring headphones off because it was unbearable like I'd be talking and I'd be hearing myself at a normal level of volume and then I'd change a channel or something like that and the frequency given off would be way louder than what I was talking and it just hurt your ears really badly and it was really annoying but that's the only thing I found so far that it was kind of a uh, problem with these so this is really I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys how these sound so to set it up first and foremost we will turn on the transmitter here like this 
and then it should turn on and then we can plug in the uh, microphone here which is the included lavalier mic and like I said I put the little clip and the um, wind filter on here it's just a basic lavalier mic without those and then so we go ahead and plug the microphone into here that is all you need to do though you plug in the microphone here make sure it's on we'll go ahead and turn it to channel 6 here then we'll turn on the receiver here and then we'll go ahead and plug this auxiliary connection into our camera. So first and foremost, we'll plug in the output here. And then if we want to, we can plug in some headphones. What we will do is put this on channel 6 here. So they should be connected. And the little blue LEDs up here will tell us that they are in fact connected. And we'll go ahead and give you an audio sample. And now the audio you're hearing is this um, Movo here. So I'll go ahead and turn up the volume because it's really quiet here. So turn up the volume a bit. Um, it sounds like there's really awful feedback here. So change the channel here, which I have headphones on, so this is going to be very painful, but change 7. Oh, okay, there was the really loud, awful feedback. Alright, so that does sound a little bit better. It's not perfect still, but um, it does sound definitely much better in my opinion. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It does sound like there's just a lot of like radio frequency, which is basically how this has sounded on any channel I've found. It hasn't been like bad, like it's not like there's really loud buzzing popping sounds. It doesn't sound like I'm talking over the radio a little bit, which is a little weird. Alright, so this is on uh, 15 here. I don't know if it sounds any better, so like I said, no matter what, it does sound just a little weird. Right now it definitely sounds kind of robotic and a little weird, and there's definitely like buzzing and hissing and everything around the recording. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but they didn't change if I use the uh, included auxiliary jack or anything like that. I have flipped to a bunch of different channels. I'll go ahead and flip to channel 12. This is going to hurt my ears a lot, but I will do it for the video. Alright, so there was the super loud frequency feedback that is extremely painful to listen to. Whenever you're changing channels or turning one off or anything like that, definitely take your headphones off first. If I had mentioned earlier, this connection here is going into my camera right now, which is what's going up here. This is going into the lavalier mic, which is clipped right next to my Audio Technica System 10 one that I've been using for the video before I plug these in. And this is going to my headphones right now, which I'm wearing, which I'm monitoring the audio with. So it should give you a good indication of the sound quality and everything like that. So we'll go ahead and plug the Audio Technica System 10 back in, and we're back to the Audio Technica System 10. The monitoring for this was very, very hissy and buzzy and just sounded like I was listening to a bad radio frequency or something like that and that was on a bunch of different channels didn't matter what channel it was on or anything like that because I was flipped through a bunch of different channels and it sounded exactly the same on every single one so anyway this has been my review of the W mic 70 from Movo this is a UHF wireless microphone system I went ahead and showed you the sound quality and pairing them and how each of them works and everything like that so theoretically you should be able to make a decision about whether or not this is the right product for you but I gave you an idea of the sound quality, which is one of the main things that will be important if you're actually using the included lavalier kit. However, if you're using your own lavalier kit, the sound quality will definitely be better. But the frequency and hissing and stuff I was hearing in the monitoring definitely sounds like it's a problem between the transmitter and the receiver, in which case using your own microphone won't really help. If you guys like to purchase the product, of course, the link will be in the description, as it always is. If you enjoyed this video, then a like rating is always appreciated. And if you'd like to see more videos similar to this one, then feel free to subscribe. This has been Jordan for Joe Reviews. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next review.